Hello everyone, my name is Agne and today I'm hosting a podcast dedicated to Erasmus Days that take place all around Europe from the 15th to 17th of October. This is the very first podcast we are hosting here today as the team of the International Cooperation Department and it will address a very relevant topic how student exchange around Europe and around the world has been affected by the global pandemic and what will happen next. So students on exchange during the spring semester of 2020 have had a unique exchange experience. And today in the studio, we have two of those students, Ushrine and Vitalia. Hello. Hi. Uh, Vitaly is studying for her second bachelor's degree in East Asian languages and cultures. She enjoys everything from long walks alone, listening to her favorite music, to writing fantasy stories and going out with her friends. Oshirine is an avid reader who loves fantasy books, movies and jogging. She is master student of biotechnology and pharmaceutical analysis. Uh, have I missed something or is it? everything we need to know about you okay so I think we will find out more uh, while during the conversation okay so it is a very different uh, time from what we all have experienced and how do you find uh, this autumn semester personally well for me it didn't change that much because we are now back to normal classes, face-to-face classes, and I like them even more because I like going to university. And on the spring, it was my kind of last semester as a bachelor student, and I really missed that. And I really wanted to go like face-to-face, have, have the face-to-face classes, and I didn't have this opportunity to finish university like that. So I'm happy that we have again the contact class. And for you, Vitalia? Well, I spent the whole year in Japan, so um, in autumn semester we had um, face-to-face classes, but unfortunately from spring, uh, from April until the end of August, we had only online classes, so it was, I was very excited to hear that when you will have like face-to-face contact classes, and I was kind of excited to go back to university, see my friends, interact with uh, professors, and, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, right now we have um, this chance. We'll see how it goes next. So. Okay, I see. So, but let's get back for a little while and just speak about the fact. While did you choose go to study to you know for exchange program in the first place? Oshrina, I know that you you did it twice once. Uh, like an Erasmus student and second time as an internship. So can you just tell us what was your motivation and also so how did you find this whole experience? Where did you go? Well, I had my exchange studies two years ago in Turkey in Antalya, Agdemis University and I don't know, I've always wanted to, to study abroad in foreign language and I had this necessity to confront new challenges outside of familiar support. Also, a few of my other friends wanted to join to go for exchange, so it was a great opportunity to go to for exchange. So I immediately decided that I will apply and I got here. Ian, Natalia, how is it for you? Oh, well, the main reason is my long lasting passion for Japan and Japanese culture. So, since it's my second bachelor, I already had in mind that I want to go to exchange. And that's why I chose to study in New York, because I know that this university has a lot of um, exchange programs with different Japanese universities. And I just wanted to try my best to do and go. So, I've learned that you studied Japanese language. Did you get to use it or did you speak in English while in Japan? Well, it's again different because in autumn semester um, I had a part-time job in, at university. We also would use a lot of Japanese with professors of the classes and during the classes and I felt that um, I got better but since um, 
spring semester was online. Somehow I lacked of that interaction and I didn't think I improved that much during the second semester, sadly. Yes, I see. Well, it's all circumstantial, of course. And so you said that, well, I see your motivation was very strong to go there. And what do you think you have brought back from, from your exchange programs? Uh, what has changed? Do you see something different about yourself after your experience as an exchange student? Well, yeah, definitely. I saw another culture, I saw, uh, met new people, like I said, I'm kind of introvert myself, so I, it helped my personal development, it helped like to overcome my inner, inner introvert, actually. And for you, Vitalia? So, um, the, que the question was, um, uh, what so when you came back, uh, do you find yourself different? Do you think that this experience has left a mark in you? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think during the year uh, a lot happened in my life in Japan, um, and I cha I went to Japan more like introvert, but came back as ambivert, I would say, and um, I I think I had. Uh, more time to analyze myself because of the mm -hmm. culture and about how Japanese sees the world and uh, I think it was a great experience and, and it definitely left a huge mark in me. So. Uh, I think if I met my past self as I was uh, before going to Japan, um, we would have like a big fight together. <laughs> I see, that's very nice. So it gives you a different, a completely different perspective, yes. Yeah, so, do you feel more compassionate for students who come here to Lithuania to study? Do you feel like this need to help them? Actually, after after I came back uh, from Erasmus studies, I applied for mentorship program mm -hmm. uh, here in Vitoria uh, Smolensk University. And actually, I had the Turkish buddy to mentor, so it was really nice to see his reaction on on Lithuania. To compare my my first expressions, how I went there, it was really really fun. Honestly. Yeah, I would agree. Um, same with me, because like I said, I had a part time um, at university, and mm -hmm. my job was to talk with a Japanese student who wanted to go to exchange in Europe and or the United States, and just explain how the um, exchange work and uh, what they need to know about the culture differences and uh, the since I went myself um, I knew what kind of struggles I had and um, how can I help them and not right now when I came to Lithuania I think I would manage to help better than I mm -hmm. would do the same before going to Japan and living through the, all, all those things yeah you do have now the experience of studying both abroad and here and you can bring the best of two worlds and another question which is usually very interesting and appealing for those who decide to study abroad is uh, this cultural experience uh, what did you have some sort of cultural shock what was different what was surprising what did you learn that was very culture specific and made you see that you are, after all, in a different cultural setting. So, okay, Turkey is kind of different than, than other European countries, than other countries, because it's like a Muslim country and they have their own specific culture. For me, the biggest cultural shock, I guess, was that they say group and say bye to each other by kissing uh, two times on the cheeks and even though we were it was strange for us <coughs> because in Lithuania I consider our, us as a bit colder people actually so even though after some time it was unusual habit and it happened for me and other friends that one uh, student from the university kind of he wanted to say bye and my friend backed away from him 
and it was kind of funny but also kind of rude and it's like still unusual for us to 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 greet and say bye to them in, in this kind of way also kind of it was uh we needed some time to get used to the azan if not the calling for a prayer because it starts in the at around 5 a.m so we needed some time to get used to the morning after a while we didn't like hear it anymore and it was also kind of interesting how uh, i was invited uh, on during the spring semester i was invited to the culinary camp in, in mengen it's kind of small city most famous for its gastronomy or and there's so many famous chefs the finished uh, university from from the university of Mengen and it was the last days and we were kind of there was a concert and we were having fun dancing and the music just stopped and what was happening it was really shocking for for me and other foreigner friends and they stopped because of the azan and i really didn't expect that that they would stop the concert because of that maybe for the turkish students it was really common but we didn't expect i knew like it's spring i should have gotten used to it you would think but in antalya it's more like a european uh, like city and they they don't stop for example they don't don't turn off the music in the restaurants maybe in the some of them so it was really shocking i didn't really expect that they will do that so and also kind of one thing that was impressive that they are really trust they trust each other and how they traveled from one city to another they hitchhike so actually i got like an offer to hitchhike from antalya to uh, merden merden it's like 24 hours uh, trip by bus so you can imagine it's really long and because he said like yeah you can join me because you're blonde you have colorful eyes and like how can how am i supposed to hitchhike like this <laughs> showing my eyes and it's like no I, I refuse to actually it's too much for me i wouldn't trust it we don't do that here i mean we really don't do that here and it was really surprising for me how do how completely normal for them so it's different and I didn't also mention before, but I did my Erasmus practice in Serbia, Novi Sad, and there weren't any cultural shocks. Actually, it's, the Novi Sad looks really, really similar to me as uh, Konas at some points. Architecture, infrastructure, nature really looks, looks like similar. Just that one quality of Serbs that I really like that they drink coffee slash socialize for two or three hours and they really chill relaxed people and it's different from other European countries. Uh, thank you so much for such an extensive uh, story. I think it's very inspiring to see what's different and what is similar. And so speaking about Novi Sad, another common thing is that it is going to be the European capital of culture next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Konas will be next in 2022. So do they prepare in some kind? Do you see the signs? Yes, it's all over in the city center. It's all over. You can see that. We're really proud of that. Okay, thank you. So, and now, Vitalia, let's go back uh, to you and uh, go further to Japan. So, what is this experience for you in Japan? Uh, since Oshina's <coughs> uh, topics were so interesting, I just want to follow her and compare. Uh, so, for example, <coughs> as uh, greetings, uh, I I consider myself warm person. As for example, you meet with your family or friends, you would hug them in Lithuania. But in Japan, they don't really do that. They keep the distance. They might bow for each other, or just nod with their heads. And that was kind of shocking for me at first, because I meet people I consider consider them as my friends, and I was like, hi, and I could go like closer, but they just would lean back for me. <laughs> and um, and as for religion, um, what was surprising for me that if you ask Japanese what 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 is your religion? They would mostly say that they don't have one because they don't 
they really enjoy um, various things. For example, they use they're using for funerals. They're using uh, Buddhism um, traditions. Um, as for weddings, they really love our Western dresses. And, uh, that was kind of diff different uh, from what I experienced before. And um, about people that I thought they are very they they trust each other so much they believe everything you say it's true but at the same time sometimes they are very very polite but sometimes i would talk with them and i'm not sure if they are telling me the real opinion like how i look today oh you look great but you don't really know they think they didn't just don't they just don't want to like, upset you probably and that kind of i wouldn't call it fakeness but sometimes it was kind of um just tell me what you really think. Yeah, I really think you look great. Um, and the level of politeness, like I said, um, they're like different, even different vocabulary. So one time, it was my first week in Japan, and I went to this um, bookstore. Um, I needed to buy a textbook. And I'm asking her, please, can you help me find um, in Japanese? And she would start speaking this very polite language and I have no idea what she's telling to me but I'm really sorry but I don't understand could you leave, could you use like level one <laughs> like down a bit and she started like um she smiled for me like oh sorry of course and um, what other thing um about them being friendly especially in my region Kansai when I was uh, living so people would, if you, let's say you're in the station and you seem lost, you're just staring at the bat and everything is in kanji and um, um, hieroglyphs and you don't understand um, what's written, they would just come to you and like, uh, maybe you need help, you can try. Even if they don't speak English or your Japanese is not that good to understand, they would use signs and everything. If you stop someone um, at a bus stop and like, do you know where, how to go there? And they don't know, but they would start searching on their phones and one time even person just took me there I was like oh you don't need to go with me no no i just want to make sure you go there I'm like, okay thank you so yeah i probably it wasn't a culture shock it was just something different and then i came back to europe and everyone seemed so angry it's like why you're so angry <laughs> but yeah probably that's um what i was surprising because i was expect not expecting but as people imagine japan they see like skyscrapers and big big buildings and lights and that's what you get if you go to Tokyo but my city was Kyoto which is um, one of the most traditional cities in Japan they have over 3,000 uh, temples and shrines a lot of mountains and a lot of a lot of nature so kind of they have the main river Kamogawa which actually kind of reminded me of, of our Namunas in Lithuania and Konas um, so I was most of the time I'm feeling like I'm home uh, because of that so much green around me but something that uh, first thing I would open my eyes and I look through the window every morning and I see mountains even now I'm like a bit shaking because it was such blast for me you won't see that uh, much in Lithuania and they ask like oh do you have mountains and I was like do you yeah we have a hill of 300 <laughs> meters <laughs> and, um, yeah I guess Thank you. So it was really interesting to hear about your experiences and uh, all the cultural and social uh, aspects of your exchange. However, you've been to other countries during a very interesting time, during the time of Corona, when it started or was already advanced. So, oh, Shirina, how was it in Serbia? So at the beginning it was pretty much similar to Lithuania, but people weren't paying that much attention to it, they weren't serious about it, and actually some doctors even made fun out of it on Serbian TV. But after some time, it, when the situation got more serious, they were scared because they didn't know any, too much about it, and actually during the at the, around mid of the March, the state of emergency was proclaimed. Uh, schools and universities were shut down pretty soon, and the on only online classes will, were available. And actually, when 
uh, situation got like was getting worse. Uh, uh, the number was around two, three hundred cases per day. The whole country was placed under the quarantine. People had to stay at home uh, uh, every day from 5 p.m. till 5 a.m. and it was a little bit more drastic measure than it was in Macedonia, of course, and it was even worse for the elderly, people who had uh, uh, 65 and more years, they had to stay at home 24-7. And the situation like that, it lasted for a long, uh, almost two months, not two years actually. And after time was pressing by, they, people got a little bit relaxed about it. And number of infected people started to decrease and the elections were approaching and actually a few weeks before that the government said that everything was perfectly fine we are almost back to normal again and actually after elections the same the next day after elections they didn't even wait to tell news gradually or something they immediately said that everything is isn't under control it's not that perfect the, the hospitals are full pneumonia and etc so actually they wanted to again place the, <clears throat> some cities uh, the most infected ones under the curfew again and actually people weren't satisfied uh, about those uh, news and they went to the streets to protest and actually me and my friend who uh, with me we experienced the prote protest a few days after we came it started actually we were living next to the city center across the one of the main boulevards and it was getting really noisy we were in the apartment and jokingly I said I really didn't know what's going on I, I just said maybe the people are focusing and they were we, 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 we texted our friend what's happening and they said people are focusing because of the government because they lied to us because they said that everything is okay because they waited for elections to, to pass and after that they told the news and yeah but they they told us to stay away from it because it's not our fight and actually it was in Novi Sad it was pretty peaceful protest so it was kind of okay and with the time was passing by the situation in the whole country was like really getting back to normal so we still experienced some kind of not, not all of it was like corona As in Japan, the beginning of the pandemic was pretty calm, I would say. Um, the people were not really reacting to those, and um, and the numbers stayed because numbers stayed low. And um, I was on my during my um, on my spring break that time, so we didn't even heard about whether we have like online classes or come back to face to face classes or so keep traveling, going outside, and then of course Sakura season, people in the end of March, uh, people were gathering together, and um, there was no big news about Corona until um, actually they started, um, other countries uh, canceled their sportsmen uh, for Olympic Games, of course, for the Olympics 2020, and then um, Japan was kind of forced to postpone Olympics next year and then the situation got um, yeah I would say slightly <laughs> or worsened with each day because the cases started rising the numbers are rising and we got um, from university um, a letter saying that we will begin online classes uh, instead of face to face for a couple of weeks and then we will change back to classes uh, but we stayed until the end of August, like that, studying online. And um, as Japan closed their borders, so foreigners couldn't get in. But Japan itself, it was in um, an emergency state, of course. But I would, uh, I would say it wasn't so strict as it was in Europe. There was recommendations for people not to go out. 
And of course, uh, Japanese, they stick to the rules very, very much. So if the government said, do not go out, they would not go, especially in the evenings and to the bars. But um, as for masks, for example, uh, so Japan already had, uh, even before Corona, they have very strong mask culture. So it wasn't hard for everyone to wear masks. So I didn't feel any kind of difference in, in this perspective. And um, as a student, exchange student, what I felt, I was living in a dormitory with 20 students, which 10 of them um, was um, in Japan only for one semester, so they came back. And, it, and those other 10 that's supposed to come um, in uh, spring semester, they canceled you know, because most of them were Chinese. And so it was 10 of us supposed to stay for uh, spring semester. But as Europe started shutting down their borders, a lot of students just decided to go back, um, especially United States, um, students from United States. So they were just taken by, back by the government or the universities. So in the end, um, only four of us stayed in the dormitory. Um, as for me, yeah, I felt some panic in the beginning because I was living among the students and I was talking about that and a lot of rumors, incorrect rumors were spreading and since I was alone from Lithuania I was kind of had to decide what to do so that's, that, that was a pretty, pretty much stressful for me but as I would go out and see um, I, would, I would go out just um, to take a walk by the river or go to the mountains um, so I, I just managed to find that inner peace and I, I just even saw that Japanese uh, since they had to work from uh, online from homes they also enjoyed this kind of stay home in and um, a lot of people with their families were just walking and uh, spending nice, nice time so I would say just the beginning was pretty stressful but later on just somehow we got used to it and I got to see Japan with almost no tourists, so I think that's kind of um, impressive and pretty unique experience since we all know that Japan is one of the most touristic countries in the world. So there are certain blessings in disguise and experience that it is worth sharing because not everyone can uh, experience what you have. And so what about the university? Uh, have you received enough support and explanations and uh, everything you needed from the host university and if needed from VMU? So for me we got uh, all the we got emails about the situation about the situation in the country and they were like they gave us like choice whether do we decide to come or not and also we had all the support from there because of the host university so they were encouraging us to, to go. So it was basically our own decision whether to go or not. Well, yeah, um, we were able to choose um, depending on our feelings whether we want to go back or stay uh, in Japan. And I was glad that my university, MU, sees me like as adult and I can decide for myself, not like other universities. I'm also very thankful for my congenitor because he gave me a lot of support back then and um, and then you also gave us like a scholarship uh, when we needed really the money the most um, uh, and the as the host university in Japan they gave us a lot of information about it it wasn't like a personal letter but we, we were able to find it on the website uh, since I was living in a dormitory there was a lot of announcements as well what to do we received some uh, books how to manage the life during Corona in the, in the post box and uh, stuff like that. Also, Jap um, my university in Japan, they gave us like uh, coupons, so we could uh, we were able to spend them for groceries or some uh, local restaurants around um, where I was living. So I think it was very useful. I'm grateful for bo both universities. So thank you. And the final question from me would be for you. So what is your advice for students who would like to travel and to experience this exchange uh, 
should they be afraid of, of all the additional circumstances or you think it's still worth it? I totally think that it's still worth it. I mean, they, I don't believe that they should be scared as myself. I, since now I'm in masters, I have, again, 12 more months for for us so I'm still thinking to go and I think they shouldn't be scared they are young healthy people as my colleague said you can experience the new culture even more because there are no tourists uh, during those during this situation so it's even maybe even better opportunity to experience new cultures so I would definitely would encourage them to, to study abroad to go for exchange uh, I would agree with Oshina and just add things like um, of course maybe you won't be able to see to live the student life um, in univer as a university student maybe campus will be shut down online classes but still you will meet a lot of people uh, you will um, be able to uh, learn more about yourself about how to live in a different uh, culture and a different environment during this time. And I would say n not to be afraid because you're doing this not for someone else, you're doing this for yourself. So just why not if a uh, university gives this opportunity and, um, and especially during Corona, if the hosting university gives you all the possibilities to, to stay safe. Music. Yes, uh, it's it's the great uh, the greatest of opportunity that all university can give. So I don't see any reason why not. Okay, so thank you so much for coming here today, sharing your very interesting stories, very rewarding stories, and inspiring us to not be afraid and just just you know go outside the box the world and experience it even though it might be more difficult so thank you so much for being here and good luck with your travels thank you so thank much you.